The question starts off a week with 3.1, just asking us to find the gradient of BC. So we are given all the coordinates of B and we are also given the coordinates of C. So we're supposed to substitute directly, not trickery whatsoever. So the gradient of BC will be equals to Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus x1 so let's take b as our second point if we do that the value of y2 will be 8 minus the value of y1 which is going to be 0 divided by the value of x2 which is 4 minus the value of x1 which is 5 so we have 8 divided by minus 1 which is equal to minus 8 so that is the gradient of BC. Let's move forward and look at 3.2. So what does the question say? If the distance between points A and B is equal to square root of 65, calculate the value of K. So let's put that in math. They say that uh, the distance between A and B is equal to square root of 60. 5. So let's have the distance formula. Uh, if we do that, we're going to have y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared being equals to square root of 65. So when we substitute the coordinates of a and b, the only unknown variable we're going to have is k, and then that is how we are going to find it. Let's go ahead and do that so if we take b as our second coordinate y2 is going to be 8 and then y1 is going to be k we square that plus x2 that is 4 minus x1 which is minus 3 so it will be 4 plus 3 we square that and it's a, it is equal to square root of 65 let's go ahead and solve what is inside uh, the bracket. So we have 8 minus k squared. How do you solve that? What is 8 multiplied by 8? That is 64. And then you multiply 8 by minus k, it will give you minus 8k. You multiply that by 2, you're going to get minus 16k. And then minus k multiplied by minus k, that is just plus k squared. And then 4 plus 3, that is 7. You square that, you get plus 49 being equals to square root of 65. So what can we do here? We can take square root of both sides. If we do that, if we square both sides, we're going to have 64 minus 16k plus k squared plus 49 being equals to 65. If we take uh, 64 to the right hand side, we're going to have uh, 1 and then if we take that 1 back then we're going to have 49 minus 1 uh, which is 48 so we have k squared minus 16k plus 48 being equals to 0 so let's go ahead and factorize which two numbers do we multiply and get 48 but when we add them we get minus 16 uh, that is minus 4 and minus 12. So that is to say that k minus 4 multiplied by k minus 12 is equal to 0. So it's either k is equal to 4 or k is equal to 12. Let's look at what makes sense between 4 and 12. Uh, B is clearly above A in terms of the y value. So if the y value of B is 8 then the y value of a should be less than 8 so this k is equals to 12 cannot be correct meaning that the answer is k is equals to 4 the y value of a let's move to 3.3 3.3 we are supposed to prove using analytical geometry methods that bp is perpendicular to ac so what are we required to prove we are required to prove that the gradient of bp multiplied by the gradient of AC 
will be equals to minus one. That's what we mean when we say uh, BP is perpendicular to AC. So let's go to our sketch and see how we can uh, find our way. So where is BP? BP is right here. And then AC is right here. There we go. We have AC. So A, we have the coordinates of A. We have all the coordinates of A. And we have all the coordinates of C. So it's easy to calculate the gradient of AC, right? So we have that figured out. What about BP? We don't have the coordinates of P. P lies on BD and we have the coordinates of D. So we can just use uh, the coordinates of BD to find the gradient of BP. For the gradient of BP, we're going to say y of b minus y of d divided by x of b minus x of d multiply by ac so let's say y of a minus y of c divided by x of a minus x of c right and then what is y of b y of b is h minus y of d which is minus 4 divided by x of b which is 4 minus x of d which is minus 2 and then we multiply that by y of a we know what the value of k is now the value of k is 4 minus y of c which is 0 divided by x of a minus 3 minus x of c which is minus 5 so what is 8 minus minus 4 that is 12 divided by 6 multiplied by 4 divided by minus 8 so we have 2 multiplied by minus a half and this is equal to minus 1 so there we go those two lines are perpendicular as the product of the gradients is equal to minus 1 uh, let's move to 3.4 3.4 we are supposed to calculate the coordinates of F if it is given that AC FD is a parallelogram so let's go ahead and look at F F is right here uh, so if it is a parallelogram let's go ahead and connect those points if it is a parallelogram then A and C D and not A and C but C and F and then D and D and F yeah we have something like this as our parallelogram right so in order to find the coordinates of F we can use the midpoint of DC as it will be the midpoint of AF but that is a painful exercise instead of doing that we're gonna use translation let me show you how if you're not familiar with the concepts so let's look at the x value of a the x value of a is minus 3 and the x value of d it is minus 2 and then the x value of c is 5 what will be the x value of f right so the way the x value of a and d differ is the same way the x values of c and f are gonna differ if a c d f is a parallelogram so here we have uh, minus 3 and minus 2 you can see that from a to d is plus 1 here we have 5 so for the x value of f we must have 5 plus 1 which is 6 so we have covered the x value of f let's look at the y values the y value of a is 4 the y value of d is minus 4 so from 4 to minus 4 that is minus 8 what is the y value of c the y value of c is zero so the way the y value of a and d differ should be the same way the y value of c and f differ so that will be zero minus eight which is minus eight so the coordinates of f is six and minus 
eight. Yeah, so you can do that instead of using uh, the midpoint. All right, let's move to the following question. 3.5. So 3.5, calculate the size of EDO. Correct one decimal, please. So let's go to our diagram and look for EDO. EDO is this angle right here. This is EDO. How can we possibly find EDO? Well, I can see fairly quick that I can find the value of this angle here. If I find the value of that angle, then that angle will be equals to this angle. I think they are called vertical opposite angles and they're supposed to be equals to each other. So I can use that angle to find this angle. And then I can find this angle and then that angle should be equals to our angle of interest plus this angle here. Uh, the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior. So how can I find this first angle that I'm claiming I can find? I can use the gradient of BD. I can use the gradient of BD, which I already have because tan theta is equal to M. And then how can I find this angle? I can use the gradient of AD to find that angle. So let's go ahead and compute that. We're going to see that tan of that angle is equal to the gradient of BD. That angle will be equal to tan arc of BD. But we have the gradient of BD. We calculated it uh, when we were trying to prove that AC is parallel to BP and it was 2. So what is tan arc of 2? That will give you so yeah that angle is covered. Let's find uh, this exterior angle of our triangle. We're going to use the gradient of AD. So we're going to say that um, that angle, what is it? Is it alpha? Yeah. We're going to say that alpha is equal to tan arc of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus what am i doing i already have the gradient of that line because this line is supposed to be parallel to this line because our shape is a rhombus right so we said that the gradient of this line is minus eight so we're gonna go ahead and substitute that so we have uh, minus eight uh, this will give you minus 82.874875 uh, if it is minus, you must always add 180. If you do that, you're going to get 97.125. So now we can see that uh, our exterior angle is equal to 64.63 plus uh, EDO plus our angle EDO. But we know that alpha is 97.125. So let's take 63.63 to the left hand side. We're going to get 97.125 minus 64.63 being equals to ADO. If you put that in your calculator, you should get 33.7 being equals to EDO. The last question let's let's do the last question uh, we're supposed to calculate uh, the area of a d c we're supposed to calculate the area of a d c let me highlight a d c because i cannot even see it uh, it's just a mess uh, with a a is right here and then d is right here uh, we c c is right here because our shape is a rhombus we have a 90 degrees angle here and then if that is the case then we can take ac as our base and dp as our height so we can say that uh, the area of triangle adc is equal to half ac multiplied by dp so we have the coordinates of a and c so we can easily find ac 
we have the coordinates of D, but we can find the coordinates of P using the midpoint theorem. So we basically have DP. Now it's just a matter of putting that in your calculator and finding your final answer, which should be equals to 30 square units.